one and the impure is in the eyes of the beholder. And love is in the presence of the love maker. It was written, Damien Marley, here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, as we continue our community media tour. We'll be in, oh, uh, Sacramento at noon, and we'll be in Nevada City, Grass Valley, tonight at 6 o'clock. As we bring out the voices of people around this country, we end today's show with the latest in a story that's being followed closely here in the Bay Area, the case of Chauncey Bailey. Bailey is the Oakland Post editor who was shot to death in downtown Oakland in August 2007. He'd been investigating possible links between a local bakery and several killings in the area when he was gunned down in broad daylight. After his death, the group of reporters banded together to continue his investigation into the Your Black Muslim Bakery and to look at any role the bakery may have played in Bailey's murder and at the role of the police in its investigation. The group called itself the Chauncey Bailey Project. Since 2007, they've uncovered key elements in the case and have helped to move the investigation forward. In the latest news that broke this week, the group's reporting that murder charges are now imminent against Yusuf Bayfour, the former leader of the Your Black Muslim Bakery, and another man for Bailey's killing under a plea deal reached with the only person arrested in the case. Robert Rosenthal is the executive editor of the Chauncey Bailey Project, also the executive director of the Center for Investigative Reporting that's become the headquarters for the project. He joins me here in San Francisco in the studios of Link TV. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. It's good to have you with us. Explain um, how your project got started and the significance of the story. Today, the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle says, chilling account of slaying. Right. Well, the project started in the weeks after uh, Chauncey Bailey was murdered in August of 2007, when a group of journalists really were brought together, led by Sandy Close from New America Media and Dory Maynard from the Maynard Institute. They knew personally knew Chauncey Bailey. Uh, and they really they brought a team of people together, journalists, to try and figure out why Chauncey was murdered, what he was really working on, and to show that when a journalist is murdered in this country, his fellow journalists will come together and try and solve the crime and bring, bring, bring to account the people who are responsible. Explain who Chauncey Bailey was, Chauncey, exactly how Chauncey he Bailey uh, was the editor of the Oakland Post, an African-American paper in, in Oakland. Uh, and he uh, was a lifelong journalist. He'd worked for the Oakland Tribune. He'd worked in Detroit. And he was really a community journalist at the end of his life. And he was very well known in Oakland. He was had a TV show. And he was a journalist who had his fingers on the pulse of the community. He was the type of person who would challenge authority, raise questions, and uh, he was basically uh, going to work one morning, August 2nd, and uh, a, a masked gunman ran up to him with a shotgun and, and assassinated him. He was shot three times uh, and, and killed on the spot. The gunman ran away, jumped into a white van, uh, and the next, uh, in the next few days, the gunman allegedly was arrested, the alleged gunman. So when did the Chauncey Bailey Project, your investigation right. start? The project started uh, really within a few weeks when that, a first meeting was held to try and figure out what to do. And it was very difficult at that time because you brought together multiple news organizations who did not normally collaborate. And there was a decision, and part of the decision was no one news organization had enough strength and skill to put together the work. And it was very unique. People volunteered. People who had been laid off came forward, and we also worked with, uh, you know, University of California Graduate School of Journalism at Berkeley, San Francisco State. It was really a new model of how to work together on a, on a project, and in part it was inspired by the Don Bowles project, a journalist who was murdered in 1977 in, in Arizona. So what did you uncover? Well, over the course of the investigation, uh, really the, some of the key findings were that the, it was clear from the outset to us that this was not a lone gunman, that there had been a conspiracy, uh, and that over the course of the investigation, really uh, questions were raised repeatedly by, the, uh, by us and also by the San Francisco Chronicle, who was not part of the project, about the police work, the shoddiness of it, was there a conspiracy, relationships between certain police officers and the bakery itself, uh, past murder investigations were reopened. Uh, and what really, uh, it, un it sort of uncovered a very uh, unprofessional and questionable police department in Oakland. The police chief eventually resigned. The officer who was headed the homicide investigation this week was suspended. Uh, and the key work was really done in 2008. The project 
made public a secretly recorded police video that really sh shocked the Bay Area and uh, is on a, a website was created. So there was a lot of uh, constant pressure, especially from the project last year. We did 56 stories alone. Explain this key video of Yusuf Bay the Fourth that uh, you uncovered. Well, we didn't they uncover the video, just to be accurate, was first reported in the Chronicle. What the project did was obtain it and make it public. It was put on multiple uh, TV stations, on websites. And the video was a secretly recorded police video of Yusuf Bey, who was at that time the leader of the bakery, basically bragging about the killing of Bailey. Also bragged about his relationships with the police, talked about how the murder weapon was used. And it really shocked people to see somebody talking. He described in the video how Bailey was shot and is literally showing his head jerk, Bailey's head jerking back. And seeing that uh, really led to an unraveling of the case when that was first uh, made public by the Bailey Project last year. Um, the San Francisco Chronicle piece today, chilling account of slaying, saying after striking a deal with prosecutors, Devandra Broussard described in detail how he carried out orders from the leader of your black Muslim bakery to kill the Oakland journalist, Chauncey Bailey, including specific instructions to fire enough rounds to make sure it ain't no coming back. Um, so Devandra Broussard has admitted firing the shots that killed Chauncey, now saying who the higher right. up was that ordered it. Right. That, ha that all unraveled this week. A lot of that had been reported, you know, over the last 18 months. But the details are now really coming out. Uh, and Broussard initially uh, confessed and he recanted. Now these events this week really point to the broader thing that we've been really working on and trying to prove. And in a sense now, the, the fact that it clearly was some form of conspiracy, uh, you know, is being laid out. And, and in the weeks ahead, there's expectation that others will be charged. You're the head of the Center for Investigative Reporting. Can you talk about um, what this means for investigative journalism uh, more broadly? Uh, I'm looking here, reading from the San Francisco Chronicle, it's in trouble. The Seattle Post Intelligencer is closed. The Rocky Mountain News is closed. We're seeing newspapers all over the country going bankrupt and closing. Well, I, I think this investigative reporting is really uh, central to American democracy. My background is in big newspapers, and I've decided to try and help be part of the solution. And I think going forward, uh, as we see newsrooms being winnowed down and newspapers shut, and it's happening all over the country, groups of journalists who have lost their jobs, who believe in the power of the press and the role of in democracy are coming together to form new models. And the Bailey Project, because of its collaborative nature, I think is going to be a model going forward because many newsrooms don't have the resources on their own to do this. But when you can meld strengths, you can bring journalists together to do things and also tell the story, not simply in a traditional way in a newspaper, but use new media to have a broader impact with the story through using the internet, video, radio, obviously. And I think that's a model that we're going to see going forward in the future, where teams come together and really get a story out in multiple ways. And we're trying to do that at the Center for Investigative Reporting. Uh, if Bay is convicted, will your work continue with the Chauncey Bailey Project? I think that we're, we're now really thinking about how not only to continue work focusing on Oakland, because that's really the core of the stories, which has many, many issues, as you know, and problems, but also try and do something around his legacy in terms of media literacy, education and, and do it and take his assassination really his death and turn it into something that hopefully will be beneficial to Oakland. So it's not just doing the story but also carrying forward sort of the use his who he was as, an, as, a, as an, a person who can talk about the uh, power of the press. And this issue of journalists holding those in power accountable. Um, you talked about the shoddy police investigation, what it meant when the Chauncey Bailey project was there around holding the powers that I, I Yeah, I think that I absolutely believe that uh, without the continual pressure from the project, as well as other media coverage, that this, we would not be where we are today. I think it, this, they, they, they got somebody, he's, he basically, they said he confessed, that would have been it, done. And our belief that there was a broader story here. And I think that without the continual pressure of the press on institutions at a local level, state level, national level, uh, it's going to be a real problem for all of us. 
Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, very important, uh, the work that you have done. Robert Rosenthal is head of the Center for Investigative Reporting. As we wrap up today's broadcast, if you'd like a copy, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Help us grow our audience by going to our website at democracynow.org and posting stories to your favorite social networking sites like Facebook, Dig, and Slashdot. You can also follow Democracy Now! on Twitter to get our latest updates. Go to our website to start following the Twitter feed. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Berkshire from Doku Doos, Aaron Monte, Angela Common, Nicole Salazar, Steve Martinez, Honey Massoud. Special thanks to Dennis Moynihan, Chuck Skurich, Elizabeth Press, Robbie Karen, Peter Curry's, Michael Nagara, Mike DeFilippo.